Good morning students. We will start with the fifth module. This is the first part of fifth module lectures. So the first topic is physical hazards. Now what do you mean by a hazard? A hazard is something that can cause harm to the people. Now what do you mean by physical hazards? Physical hazard is a factor that is within the environment that can harm the body without even touching it. For example, falls that the worker experience, confined spaces, noise that can harm the ears, the temperature, electricity, sunlight, vibrations, lighting, high or low air pressure. So these are various examples of physical hazards. Now you can see that hard hats which is an example of a personal protective equipment which can protect people against physical hazards. So it is an example of PPE that is personal protective equipment. Now what are the benefits and what is the purpose of good lighting? Why light is important? Because light gives a perception of vision. That is an object will not having a proper appearance, color or shape without proper lighting. Light and color can affect the human efficiency, uh, can reduce the accident possibility as well as his general well-being, moral and fatigue. So the medical researchers have already proved that sufficient amount of lighting is required for healthy psychological functioning of a human organism. Now what are the benefits of good lighting? So better light can improve the work performance as well as give a better environment. It can also give a better discrimination that is discrimination between uh, good and bad materials in the sense that it can result in less spoilage and very quick fault detection. It can also result in better work, uh, can improve the alertness reduce the fatigue so thereby resulting in good output as well as good production now how can the uh, safety as well as the productivity improved using good lighting good lighting results in the decrement of accidents it can increase the work quality as well as quantity increases the productivity so better health can be promoted overall moral of the workers can be boosted up uh, so it can make good lighting can make the people more alert and it can enable people to concentrate more it can also result in better discrimination resulting in less spoilage less rejects fast fall detection better work and finally better performance now we have seen what are physical hazards now moving on to the next topic that is a chemical hazard. So many industrial processes involve the use of chemical materials. So it can be either a finished product or the intermediate finished product or byproduct. So many of these products can be hazardous to the people that is the workers. The raw materials that is used in the industry could be hazardous because of the toxic nature of that particular material. So all these come under chemical hazardous materials. Now what are the different examples of chemical hazards? It can be categorized as solids, liquids or gases. So in the solid comes the wood, wool, paper etc which is combustible or flammable. Now toxic solids are either mercury, cadmium etc then corrosive solids include caustic soda, caustic potash etc, radioactive materials such as gunpowder, coal dust etc. Now the type of liquid chemical hazards are petrol, kerosene which are flammable, then comes the nitric acid, sulfuric acid etc which are corrosive liquids, then toxic liquids like methyl, alcohol, benzene, explosives such as nitroglycerin, then gases which includes oxygen, hydrogen which are combustible or flammable. Then comes the corrosive gases such as chlorine, sulphur dioxide etc. 
toxic gases such as carbon monoxide and explosives such as hydrogen so these are the various examples of chemical hazards so once again chemical hazards could be classified as solids liquids or gases now how do we control the chemical hazards so we have already seen these four categories or these the hierarchy of control which includes at the primary position includes the comes the elimination or the substitution then comes the engineering controls then the administrative and work pra practice controls and finally personal protective equipment so we have already discussed the same in the fourth module what do you mean by elimination or substitution elimination means you have to uh, remove that particular toxic substance from the material the, from, from the production process itself or you can substitute replace the material with some other material that is a less, less uh, that is less toxic now the second control method is the engineering method or engineering control method which requires a change in the design or the chain uh, some physical change in the workplace design now the next is the administrative and work practice control uh, which requires the administrative uh, uh, section to take in, uh, uh, take the responsibility in controlling the toxic to, uh, or in controlling the material toxic toxicity uh, thereby requiring the worker or the employee to do something that is some uh, changes in the uh, workplace uh, uh, some changes in the workplace controls etc now the final uh, method is protective uh, sorry personal protective equipment which requires the person to wear something or to use protective equipment to reduce the exposure to chemicals so we have already seen these four factors in the fourth module itself so moving on to the uh, effect which is effective you can see that elimination is the most effective which means that you will be removing the hazardous material from using itself now the substitution is the replacement then the engineering controls is the uh, control by change in some workplace designs then fourth one is the work practice or the administrative control which requires the involvement of the administrative level as well as the worker level uh, by proper training or change in procedure etc now, now the least effective is the personal protective equipment uh, but it's still effective if there is no other option you can go for PPE now um, so we have already seen all these elimination engineering controls then administrative and uh, work practice controls finally personal protective equipment which includes the uh, chemical protective clothing respiratory protection wearing respiratory protection using gloves eye protection etc so all these methods could be used to improve the working environment now the various control measures the first one is the proper storage so the chemical uh, toxic material that is being used should be properly stored then the temperature as well as the pressure should be maintained according to what is required operations and processes should be properly maintained uh, it should be done based on what is available in the manual then education and training of the workers uh, if there is any problem that is the information has to be passed to the superiors and the data should be collected and finally the monitoring should be done properly so that a further accident does not occur because of that toxic material uh, if there is any repair in the equipment that should be properly done and the maintenance should be done properly then finally the use of personal protective equipments now the next topic is material safety data sheets or msds so these are designed uh, to provide both the workers as well as emergency emergency pro personnel uh, with the procedure of how to handle and work with the uh, chemical uh, hazard or rather a chemical material so the msds includes information such as the physical data that is what is the melting point boiling point flash point etc then regarding the toxicity uh, what are the health effects or how the health is affected by that particular material then uh, first aid reactivity how the particular 
a material reacts to various physical changes then how it can be stored how the disposal can be done without affecting others then the protective equipment that is to be used then finally uh, if there is a spill or leakage how that can be maintained so all these are included in the material safety data sheets so these are various examples of material safety data sheets uh, so you can see there are three data sheets which uh, for the middle one you can see there are different sections section 1 section 2 section 3 section 4 and so on uh, so the section 1 is chemical product and company identification section 2 is composition information on ingredients so each and every material data sheet will be containing all these informations so we'll see what are the various contents in a material data sheets so the first one that should be there is the identification that is what is the chemical name what is the trade name manufacturer name and what is the address and emergency phone number to be contacted so all these are given in the first section itself then what are the different hazardous ingredients that is being used then uh, how do you identify that hazardous material that is a appearance order uh, then all those uh, that uh, the details about the hazardous material that is to be concerned then comes the first aid measure so if any leakage includes uh, then what should be done as an emergency as well as first aid procedures then uh, about the firefighting uh, measures that is how can you protect uh, if there is any outbreak or something how can you protect yourself then the accidental release measures if by some reason it has released uh, the material has been released into the environment what can be done that is the guidelines to prevent or minimize the adverse effect on human beings environment as well as property then what are the evacuation procedures clean up and how the disposal can be done then how it is to be handled and stored then uh, explosive controls and how personal protection is to be done what should be used as a PP that is a personal protective equipment then what are the different physical and chemical properties how stable is it how uh, or what are the conditions on which that particular product or the material can react then what are the toxicological information that is information uh, regarding the animal testing human experience on that particular toxicity of the material then ecotoxological information that is uh, what are the uh, impact on the environment if this particular material is released into the environment then how the disposal can be done then how the transport uh, how can you transport this material from one place to another then which are the different regulatory informations and various other information such as what is the hazardous rating then issue date that is a msds publishing date as well as if there is any revision that is also to be included so all these are required in msds which uh, gives an idea about the hazardous materials that is being handled in that particular industry